I'm here at OEC headquarters in Paris talking with Dr. Mar Bide, author of The Venturesome Economy. Dr. Bide, what are some of the common misconceptions about innovation? People frequently misconceive innovation as an activity ex undertaken exclusively by men and women in white coats. In fact, the kind of innovation that sustains widespread prosperity is undertaken by everybody, not just scientists and engineers. It's people who, uh, pe people on the factory floor, people who sell and market new innovations because new innovations can't be used unless they're sold and marketed. And most importantly, I'd say it's, it's, innovation, it's innovation by users of innovation because the use of innovation is usually not a passive process. So this pro in innovation involves everybody in the economy. Dr. Pitti, what's an appropriate role for government in fostering innovation? Because of the misconception that innovation is undertaken principally by scientists and engineers, governments tend to focus their, their efforts in subsidizing science and technology. In fact, the, the most important way in which governments affect innovation is rather quite indirect. As, it, as an economy advances technologically, it requires governments to do more and more in a legitimate sense. So there are positive externalities that have to be supplied by governments. There are negative externalities that have to be controlled. So for instance, when uh, the automobile was invented, uh, you needed uh, traffic police, you needed roads to be built, you needed safety controls. When radio was invented, you needed uh, the allocation of spectrum. So there, there, are, there are a wide range of ways in which governments can, can advance or retard innovation, not necessarily by simply subsidizing R&D. Dr. Bide, what do your views on innovation mean for transport? Everything that I've said about innovation so far applies in spades to the transportation sector. So transportation, again, is a, 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 takes steam engines. So the, the, the real economic contribution of steam engines was not simply that of Stevenson who invented the steam engine. Steam engines became economically important to the degree that railroads were built, that people used the railroads, that there were commercial enterprises and later governments that, 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 that op operated these railroads. So without this widespread adopt, uh, diffusion of the railroads through the economy, the invention of the railroad would have been, would have been completely useless. Likewise, governments have a huge role in, uh, in, in controlling the negative externalities associated with transportation today. Sort of one of the biggest issues, of course, is carbon dioxide, but that's not the only one. Safety has been a, a, a big issue. Uh, the interaction of people using the transportation system is not something that the, that the market can take care of. I, I already mentioned traffic police, air traffic control. So there's a, there, there are a wide range of activities which either promote or advance innovation, again, having nothing to do with subsidizing the high-level stuff.